Hey Heath. Hey Kevin. Portable generators, it's that time of year, isn't it? It is, it's winter. <laughs> okay, well you know what, they're good to have because when the power goes out, you really need one. Portable, uh, we like because they're not that expensive and you can fill it up, gasoline typically. Front regular gas. You pull it and uh, you know, we cannot talk about these without reminding people that they do give off CO, the right. carbon monoxide, which can kill you, so you gotta run them outside. Most important thing, do not run it in the garage, do not run it in the house. Make sure it's on the outside of the building. And the nice thing about this particular unit is it actually has a carbon monoxide sensor built into it. No kidding. So if it senses it, it shuts it down? It does. It shuts the Very unit cool. down. But still keep it outside. Always keep it's it outside. It's not an excuse to put it inside. Okay. So the downside is, is that you typically run extension cords from these things, right? right. So Which is, where do we do that? Picture using them on a job site or a camp or tailgating, right. and you'd plug something 110 into one of these receptacles. Yeah. In the house, we typically don't want to do that. We want to run more of the equipment in the home. So what we're going to do is take a cord like this, what most of them have is a receptacle like this where you can plug in mm -hmm. a cord so then we'd run this to a power inlet box. Right. And so that allows us to plug the other end of the cord into it. Correct. And then a guy like you wires this to the back of the house. Correct. And now this is going to connect to it's our It's going to connect panel. to your main panel. All right. And so it's not a big generator, so it's not going to run the whole house. So we have to deal with that. In this case, we're going to select the transfer switch. It's going to run a certain number of circuits that the generator is capable of handling and that we're comfortable with. So in this case, we have a 10 circuit unit. We can pick the 10 most critical circuits that the generator can handle to run furnace, refrigeration, heating system, that right. kind of thing. Yeah, and so you pick them, you put them over into this box right here. Right. Power goes out. So when the power goes out, you're simply going to switch this from utility power to generator power. Right. And, and that's a safety mechanism, right? Because we don't want to, what is it, back feed the it lines? It is. That way there's no way the street power will actually collide with the generator power and cause gotcha. an issue. Okay. Well, you know, it's a darn good idea, and it does force you to sort of pick the critical circuits. It does. But that's what you really need in these situations. And once you pick them, they're there and you're good to go. And that's it. It's nice and simple, but you are limited to those circuits. All right. Uh, and the other panel, what's that for? The other panel gives you a little more flexibility. So in this panel, we have an interlock. An interlock, what's that? Kind of does the same thing as that, but what happens is the outside power inlet goes to this breaker. So again, you have wired something like this to the back of the house, it comes exactly. through to this panel and it's hitting this? Hits this. That's a, that's a generator on off switch? And what happens is, when you turn this on, this will actually feed the entire panel and you can select what you want to run. So what's the switch up here? So that's our main breaker, the main power coming in from the street. On or off for all of these circuits? For everything. So you still have one of these out back, it's wired to this, that's the interlock? Correct. All right, and then what do I, wait, why won't that go on? But it can't go on when that breaker's on, that's the point of this interlock. In order to turn that on, we'll turn the main breaker off, huh. slide this out of the way. Oh, it's like a little mouse trap, right? And now you can turn the generator on. Gotcha, and you can't turn this back on unless you, oh, Exactly. Okay. But, that thing is not big enough to run all of this. It and is if not. this is in here, how are we not going to have an overload? This is where you have to be a little responsible as the owner of the building. So typically what you do is when the power go out, you turn everything off. Mm. Turn the generator on. Turn the generator on. Make your switch here. Make the switch. Now start turning things back on one at a time. Ah, so well, so you get your water, your exactly. furnace, refrigerator, lighter too? Even a few other receptacles, possibly a TV. It can yeah. run the bulk of the house because at any given point, you're not using that much power. What you want it to keep away from, though, is maybe the electric oven, your dryer, yeah. bigger items, your central air conditioner you don't want to have on. What happens if I do too many? Then the generator will actually shut down. Okay. Well, that's really cool. So it gives you a little flexibility. You can pick and choose what you want to have on. Good option and good to know that they're both available. All right. Thank you, Heath. Thank you. Thanks for watching. This old house has got a video for just about every home improvement project, so be sure to check out the others. And if you like what you see, click on the subscribe button to make sure that you get our newest videos right in your feed.